Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain and Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And today we're going to be doing um, our crocus. This is how mine turned out. This is my final fire on this. Can you see? I want to take the glare off there. That's better. And I did the edge in um, a pink and then I added a little purple to it. Crocuses are cupped flowers, just like tulips. And so one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get that cupped effect with uh, your crocus. And a good way to do that is put the dark in and, and bring it not quite up to the top and it'll kind of help you round it out and make it look uh, better. So the medium that I'm using, for those of you that are new, because we have an awful lot of new people. For this, I'm gonna, I mixed my own. It's uh, half light copaiba and half mineral oil. It's the one that Randy uses, Randy Willett. And I, I really like it. And it, it does give me a much deeper color. So colors we're going to use. Now, don't get scared because I've got all these colors and you don't. All you need is a light pink, a dark purple, a medium purple. If you have a ruby, that's great. Uh, if you, you need a light and dark green, you need a, a yellow uh, and like a, 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 a yellow brown. Now, these are my colors. I'll show you what I did. I put three different types of pinks up here. This is Sandoz pink. I've never used it before, but I found that it's a nice color and it's kind of a little bit deeper than my own, or a lot, little bit lighter than my own pink. This is the soft pink that I use. It's a new soft pink and it's from uh, Ryan's or Rins, as some people called it. And it, they're out of business now, but um, a lot of people still carry their paint. And this is a, it sounds terrible, but it's a peach blush. And if you see it closely, it's almost like a light pink. It spreads real evenly. It doesn't, it's not grainy. So these are some I found that are not grainy. If you're looking for a non-grainy um, pink, I have a real hard time with pinks and purples because they're so grainy. This is a royal violet. Love it, love it. But you don't have to have it. Any dark purple will do. And because we're using the pinks, you want something that has a red cat, a red purple, not a blue purple. Okay, that's one of the things we're going for. And then this is our. These are both heliotrope here. This one and this one. Last night I was so excited. This is my favorite heliotrope. It's a light, light, light heliotrope. And I found it last night in my um, paints, and I was just I was thrilled. So I quick mixed it up. This is a really good ruby. Now I, this is um, ruby best. But it's almost like, a, I'll show you which color it is on this plate. This, oh wait, right here. That's the ruby best down at the bottom. So it's it may not be a color you want to use very often because it is kind of sharp. Um, and then I also have, I, first coat I use chartreuse, second coat I use moss green. This is a dark green. You can use black green. You can use shading green because I think I mentioned shading green. I actually did that on the first fire of that one. I use primrose. Nobody has primrose, I'm sure. So if you don't, all you want is the lightest yellow you can get. You might even want to go with a, an old ivory in the background. And I think that would give you just as nice a look. Um, maybe an Albert. Mixing's a little bright and it doesn't die down very easily. And then this is my golden okra for the centers. Hi, Yuli. Um, but you don't have to use that. You can use a yellow brown. Now, one of the other things I wanted to talk about is I, we talked a little bit about testing your paints. And for this type of project, it is important. If you test your paints, you'll learn a lot more about them than you thought you would. This one right here. When I fired it, and I fire everything in my kiln at 017, fire brown. And the colors that I wanted to use on this, I tested them. And two of them fired brown. What did that tell me? I'm still going to use those colors because I know I like them, and they've turned out when other people have fired for me, like when I go to a class or something. So I thought, I'm going to use them anyway, but if you have a kiln like I do, I have a Copper Junior. It's a small kiln. It fires on high. That's it. 45 minutes, you're done. And you need to fire it longer in order to get the hotter heat. So this was actually done at 48, 49 minutes. And it gave it 
more of a shine. See what a pretty shine I have on there? Plus, it also made those purples and those um, rubies much more pink. So that's the secret if you're if you're looking for um, how to um, determine, you know, if you get this and you know you still want to use those colors, try firing it higher. You could put this back in the kiln and fire it for a longer period of time and see. And that will tell you more about how to do your piece. So I can't stress enough. I always, I, and quite frankly, I thought this was a lot of hooey for the first many years that I um, painted. But I have to tell you, now that I'm uh, designing pieces and I'm trying to pick colors, it's so much easier to be able to pull out a tile and look at it and come up with the colors and know exactly how they're going to turn out. I'm going to start the piece. We're using a tea tile. Make sure you're you don't have um, any holes on the back to hang it. I did on, on this one. And so I had to make sure that with this one, I made it go straight up and down so that I, it could be hung. But this one has no holes, so we have nothing to worry about. If you have labels, make sure you take the labels off the back because they will fire in. Or they might burn off, but they may not, and then you've got a mess. I'm going to use my number, my, well, it's a number 12, and it's a, a filbert for the background because I really, really... Um, like the filbert for the background. I'm just taking primrose, loading it on, and painting. So that's pretty simple. Now down here I'm going to do brown, so I don't want to go quite that far, but you know you can go right around your flowers, right over your flowers. Oops, that's a little too bright. Let's just get this color on here. You need to come down, see here, this is a stem, so you need to come down behind the stem, and I noticed that on the first fire that I posted, online uh, I never put the stem in so that happens and then just go around and put your color on believe me you beginners this is not difficult because this one doesn't have a, a difficult background it's simple it's just yellow yellow is a simple color because it's very forgiving and, uh, okay all right and uh, it looks sloppy now I know and you can see highs and lows I'm sure so I'm going to wipe off my brush, and I'm, now I'm going to feather. Feather is very lightly on the back of your hand. If you were to hold your brush as far back as you could and just lightly touch the back of your hand, that's feathering. And you can pretty much tell your hairs on your back of your hand are the only things you should touch. And you just lightly, very lightly pull the brush. And that will kind of um, get rid of a lot of those highs and lows that you have in the background. Um, on your piece. Um, okay, so I've done that. I oh, need to come down a little more there. Now, if it gets on your leaves, you can wipe it off. Um, I like to use the stump. You can use a, a, a brush. Um, it's a little tricky if you're new um, to, to using a brush because you have to put it in your turpentine, get all the turpentine off of it, and then uh, uh, or put it in your, I use uh, turpenoid, and squeeze it all out on your towel and then do it. And sometimes if you leave any residual on the, on the brush, it can bleed. So I just use these um, stumps. You can get them at Dick Blick. You can get them at um, uh, any art store, I believe, carries it. And you can also buy them online. Or you could use a Q-tip. So it's up to you what you want to do, but I think that the stumps and the Q-tips actually work f better than um, trying to use your brush because your brush leaves a lot of possibilities. And then you notice I'm going around the edge just to get anything that went up too far off. And look at how much I got off. See? So it was there. Okay. Now, like I said, the secret to making it look like a cup is to keep it dark at the bottom and then lighten it as you come up, and it's going to be a little darker in the middle than it is on the sides. So um, I'm going to take and use, oh, well, let me try my, I'm trying my number, uh, this is a 12, and it's, um, we call the kind like this with the, plastic on it. We call that quill brush. This kind we call the metal ferrule with the metal. Um, it's a quill. And let's just try this right now and see if it works. I found, quite frankly, that by putting on, 
your lighter colors first. It seemed to work better for me. And then come back and put in my darker colors. And I also found that in painting this, it's kind of better to sort of paint down towards the middle a little like that. Do you see how I did that? So I want a little light there. I want a little light here. And I'm just using my full brush. I loaded a full load. And I'm just, I actually, no, I loaded a side load. But I'm using it like a full load. And then you paint lighter on the first coat than you do later. Try to get rid of all the lines. Up here, I'm going to put just a little pink, just a little pink. I'm actually using peach blush, but see what I mean about it being pink? It's really pink. This flower here, it's behind this one. So this one's on top. This is behind, but this one's behind these two. So I want a little bit of light here. I'm going to just put a little bit of light there. And then on these guys, I'm going to put a little bit of light at the top. A little bit of light at the top. I know this is kind of contradictory to what a lot of teacher, teachers tell you. And I'm going to put my light in here because that's flipping over. So the, this is a turnover, but it's pink because it's part of the flower. So I want it to be darker underneath that. And so I'm painting that in with the light color right now. These are going to be under this. So this side of this guy right here is going to be pink so that it stands out over that guy. Then this guy's pretty dark all the way around. So the only places where he's going to have any pink are actually up here. And a little bit. Oh, and I've got a lot of yellow on there, so let's get the yellow off. And a little bit right here. I'm actually going to think, I think for there, I'm going to use Ruby Best because I want it to be darker because it's next to this and it'll go under. So let me put in some Ruby Best. That's uh, Mary Ashcroft has Ruby Best. It's very pretty. She uses it a lot. I mean, a lot. We're just going to continue with the lights. And we're going to, this guy is a little bit light right here. And this guy is a little bit light. See, I like the light up at the top, so I'm going to put a little bit of the light up at the top on this guy and a little up here on there. But the key is to make sure it's smooth. You don't want a lot of strokes, so go back over and just, like I said, feather. You know, that on the back of your hand, that real light feathering. In the middle of this, right here, is going to have a little bit of pink. Okay, and then I'll feather it down. Now, the last guy we have to worry about is him. And he's in front of everybody, so he's going to have a lot of pink on him. I'm using the blush because I really like the blush. You know, you use the colors you like. So if it's not blush for you, if it's a different color, that's fine, too. I'm just putting a little bit on the top of everything here. Because if I don't, then later on I forget and I do too much of the other color, the darker colors, and I don't want to do that. Okay. I'm also going to want to keep it white up there, but I'm going to show you my secret for doing that. I use my stump, actually. So I'm going to use the heliotrope right here. And I'm just very gingerly pulling it across. This is the light heliotrope. Now I'm just going to start and work of my flowers across and work these flowers down here. I'm going to take a little bit of heliotrope here and put it on this guy here. More at the bottom than at the top because I want I want him to have the top kind of free. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of heliotrope with a little bit of royal purple right here, right here. Pull it up. There we go. And then I'm going to take a little bit of heliotrope, full load heliotrope, partial load of um, the purple, the royal purple. Put it there and there. I don't know if you can tell, but to me that looks a little more cupped than it did. And then I got to spread them out, make them a little more. Let's get the deep dark down here. Okay. 
This guy over here, I'm going to use a little bit of rose on, I mean uh, ruby, there, just a little at the base. And you notice I left this totally white here, so it'll curve over. And then here I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring my purple down. If you could do it with one stroke, wouldn't that be wonderful? And I want this to come a little further up this way. There. There we go. And this guy, you can see the buildup right there. Here, let me bring it up so you can see. Can you see the buildup right there? You don't want that. Not on a first fire. You're really going to be fighting it later. So you want to go down and just smooth it. Okay. I'm sorry. I take a little longer when I'm doing little picky things like this. Okay, and okay, now I'm going to go up into the ruby best, side low with the ruby best, and I'm just going to do these guys and make sure that they come down to touch the top of this. And I'm doing strokes that come this way, or since it's full loaded, I can do the strokes out this way as well. But then I kind of have to play with them a little because they don't always do what I want them to. There we go. And we're going to take some Ruby Best and do it up in here. And a little Ruby Best right here. That's darker because this is on top. You decide. If you don't want that leaf on top, I mean that petal on top, you can change it. Now, obviously, that's too dark there. It stands out like a sore thumb, so I'm just going to wipe it back a little. And then in the center, we're going to make it... Where's my center brush? Where are you, little brush? Oh, I'll use this. I'm using a number two. I'm using my golden okra. You could use your yellow brown. I'm just painting it in. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to go back... And we're going to use a little more of the um, the purple. And I'm going to come up under here to get the purple because you remember we talked about this is this is where the shadow is right there. And then I'll turn it down. And if you don't use one of these uh, lazy Susans, you might want to consider it because I'll tell you for stuff like this, it keeps your strokes much smoother than I think I could do on my own. And I'm just gonna pull it down this side, maybe more like this. There we go, that's better. Oops, got it in here, don't want that. You want it kind of a watercolory look on this time? I think you'll like it a lot better if you do that. And then on the next time, if you want to make it darker, you can, but at least you haven't spoiled anything. This is going to be ruby again. Now, how do I know what colors I'm using? I don't know. You know, I'm kind of, let me, let me put it this way. This is pink. Ruby's my next darkest. Purple's my very darkest. So if that's pink and I want it to be behind it, I would use a ruby. This one, I should put a little more ruby there too, because it's not... Not doing what I wanted to do. There. So can you see, if you have a pink, if you have only three colors that you're using, and sometimes that's the best, you can start out, put your light color on, and then if you know this is behind this, you'll be using the correct colors. Now, these two are in the very back. That's always a little bit darker. So I'm going to mix. I'm going to full load with Ruby Best, side load, with the violet, the royal violet, and I'm just going to come across here like this. And then on this guy, I'm going to come down here because this guy's on top. You have to decide as you're painting what's on top, what's not. And that's probably the hardest thing for any of us to do, especially when you're new. You go, oh God, I don't know which one's on top. Just think about it. Walk away, come back, and think about it, and you'll figure it out. So here, this is pink. I put a little bit of Ruby Best on it. What should I use here? Okay, I'm going to use a full load of Ruby Best and a side load 
of royal violet, and I'm going to get the royal violet as close as I can to that ruby best to give it the shadow it needs. And if it's not dark enough, I can make it a little darker, but remember, you've got the next coat. If you don't want to touch it because you like your strokes, leave it and do the next, because see, as, as you play with it, it gets weirder and weirder. So I would say if you don't like your, if you like your strokes, leave it. You can always add more depth the next time. I'm going to pull this guy up a little. Okay. Okay, these both have pink on them. I think with these two, pink is the lightest color, right? Or is that, that's actually a ruby, isn't it? Yeah, that's a ruby. So let's do a little bit of the purple then, just at the base here. And I don't want to go too dark, because if I go too dark, then I might spoil it. But I have to decide here which one's on top. I think this one's on top, so I'm going to put more on this there. There's another trick to it, too, and we'll do that at the very end. We're going to wipe out what we think is the highlight on each of these. So this is, this is a uh, pink, so I'm going to go now for a ruby best, and I'm going to put it along this side. Oops. Puts it behind there. And then I might just put it at the bottom. And the only reason I'm just putting it at the bottom is because I kind of like that highlight. I'm going to leave it. You're going to need highlights. This doesn't have a highlight, neither does that. But we will put highlights in, and I'll show you. Okay. Now, we're going to get to this guy. This guy's kind of on top of everything. So I'm going to use a blush, which is my pink, with a little ruby best. And I'm going to keep the blush on this side and put the ruby best just at the bottom. And then um, I think I'll do a little, oops, that's too much, a little ruby best, full load with a side load of purple. And, but I'm going to keep, oops, knew it was too much. I'm going to keep it more towards the center and the bottom because this is on top of that or ahead of that, above that. Okay, that's what we have so far. Okay, and I think I'm going to use a little bit of the ruby down, oh, the ruby down here. And a little bit of the ruby right here. Oh, get a little more on my brush. Okay, that's all my flowers. I'm going to take and do these little guys in the middle. That wasn't too bad, was it? This is a thing in the middle. You kind of have to remember what's in the middle here. These are those little, what are they, stamens, I think, or something. Okay, so those are done. Now, their, um, their stems are the same color as the flowers. So this stem is going to be the same color as the flower. I'll put a little purple on this one. This stem is going to be the same color as the flower. Uh, I think, I'm trying to see where else there's a stem. I think this is actually... A stem right here so we'll put it down like that okay now first I'm going to do the leaves oh I finished didn't finish that guy up there let's put the pink on we're gonna put the pink at the top of this the top of this the top of this then we'll put a little bit of ruby best mm -hmm. He's way in the background, so you don't have to do a super job with him. Just get him painted in. Get the little thing in the middle. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to start doing the leaves. The leaves are pretty simple on this. 
I'm going to full load with chartreuse, side load with my dark green, and I'm just going to put my leaves in. I'm going to just touch them in around the flowers. Come up one side, and touch them in at the top. The other thing you can do if you're a newbie and you really don't like to, to full load side load, although then you can come back and pull that little stem into the middle, which is kind of nice. Um, you can just take the char the, the chartreuse, put it down one side, kind of do a little like that. Same thing here. Now, these leaves are not crocus leaves. I know that. I don't like crocus leaves. We will be putting them in. Um, on this one, you can see the crocus leaves are these little stringy things here with the lines through the middle. Um, I'm pretending that this is in the middle of um, a tulip patch. And so I'm allowing the tulips to um, leaves to be there. Okay, so I've done all my leaves here with where I think like the highlight would show up or the lighter color would be. And now I'm going back with the darker color, the, my dark green. And you want it to cover about half your brush. And you're just going to like that. And then maybe a little at the top. Remember, you can, you can play with these much more later. You've got another fire or two. I found I'm going to have to actually do three on mine because I found some of my depth really didn't look like depth when I got done with it on the on these guys. So I, I, I will have to fire it one more time. I always put a little bit of color on the edge of at the end of my um, leaves. I don't know why I do that. I just do. I think it helps to define the end so that I don't lose it, but I learned it with the roses and I kind of I've never stopped doing it. I also think it helps give you a little more highlight at the center of your leaf if you do that. Okay, this guy is terrible. Hang on. Okay. Alrighty. And we've got this one other one to do. So we're almost done with this, actually. That's not bad, is it? What do you think? That hasn't been too bad? Oh. I'm not painting dark on this one. And the reason I'm not going too dark on this one is because I don't want to ruin it. Make sure you bring your green down to touch the flower below it. Okay, this is a little bit weird here. It's a little better. Okay. All righty. Now I'm going to take my little my little number two. I'm going to clean it out. Oh, it's got yellow in it. And I'm going to just do the green down in here. Now, oh, first I need this. I'm going to take the dark green, and I'm just going to put dark green up in here. I kind of want some dark green right in there. Ah. There. I'll get it better next time. And then I'm going to feather it out here. I don't want it to be that dark there. Okay. But that sort of indicates that some of these are coming down behind it. Okay, and then we're going to do the, oh, I don't have any brown on here. The color I forgot to tell you to put on, brown. But I'm using rich brown, but I'm using it lightly. And I'm just putting it, it's fighting me here. I'm just putting it across the bottom, just tapping it in. Get a little more 
on here. Here we go. Okay. And I'm going to bring it up to here. And then I'm going to feather it a little bit. And then I'll put this one back in. Now the other thing I want to do is take a sponge, fold it like this, and just tap the background a little bit so it's nice and even. Should have done that in the beginning and I forgot, and it reminded me that I did it here, so I will just tap it a little. Okay. And I'm going to put the purple on the bottom of this guy here. There we go. Okay. You'll see on the second coat, we'll actually be able to do a lot more with this. There we go. Okay. So that's really all there is to it. Now, the last thing I do, and this is what I wanted to make sure you understand, is I like to add my highlights at the end, which is kind of weird, I know, but I do. So um, I look at it, and I just, I usually hold it up. Yeah, I have to hold it. So I hold it, and I go, and I'm using my stump. And I'm using kind of the side of it. To give me a little highlight at the top. Oh, this is over this. That way it's clear what's over what. Okay, let's go over here. And I just, I use this side of it, and I just sort of pull down a little bit. And if I pull down too much, I just keep going. There. Oh, that should be there. Okay. And then up here, that one's okay. That one needed a little. This one needs a little. I may have to feather some of these a little bit. And this guy's on top of that guy. And this guy's on top of that guy. Okay. Okay. And then I take my brush, clean it out. I'm using my, um, this one, the number 12. But it's the... Um, and I'm just going in and just going to set it down now on here. And I'm just going to smooth some of these down so that there's no... So it doesn't look like I played with an eraser or something on it. In some cases, I might move the color up a little just to help. And that gives you, I think, a little more highlight on everything so that it's not like... There we go. Okay, and that's all I do. Jeez. So this is what I've done this time. Okay. And when it fires, it will fire differently because of the colors. These colors fire odd for me because, of course, they're pinks and purples. And then this is, this is what we're aiming for, the final product. Okay. All righty. So pick up those brushes, keep painting, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.
I hope you enjoyed the program and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.